thing. All right, it's recording. Wonderful. So, go about your questions, my friend. Um, I'm guessing you had a few ideas in terms of what, what you wanted to explore, like thought-wise. Number one, grammar and making up words thought-wise. I don't know if that work exists. Could you edit this out? Yeah, but I choose to not do it. I want them to know that I'm a fuck up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we may have to do the bleeping too, because I suspect this to be super successful and a worldwide phenomenon. I'm already thinking about names. Uh, I'm thinking about something like Leary and Hardy, like Laurel and Hardy, because one is stupid and the other one is fat. But <laughs> Fuck you, man. And why does it have to be Leary first? It should be Albus. No, no, it's Bess and Leary. Like the, the more neutral one is Bess and Leary, Bess and Leary, Bess and Leary. And that's going to be the Bess and Leary, True. Bess and Leary, Bess and... Bess and Leary combos. Cool. Yeah. So your first thought was presence, right? What's your? I think it was ideas. your first thought. Yeah. Okay. So, so you were talking about how it is a goal to be living in the here and now, and yeah. whether that is just a nice concept or an actual goal that we should go for. And I did some thinking, and I have come up with it is a nice concept that may lead people out of some. Yeah, of, out of some trouble that they're having emotionally or just cognitively. But it mm. is not a goal because if you were to achieve it, then you would gain nothing. Mm. No, so, I tend to be smart and ask me something. Yeah. Why do you say you'd achieve nothing though? Because being present doesn't just mean sitting in one place and just fully being like zoned out and being like uh, almost in a Buddha state of mind where you're just chilling and just doing nothing. I think more presence is uh, go about your day, but in terms of the voices that we experience in our head, the thoughts that manifest during the day of uh, f obviously self-reflection, uh, I guess self-pity, um, thinking about the past, thinking about the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these, these things are like they're, they're a heavy burden on most people. And I think that's why mental health, especially recently, has taken off. Like it's becoming everywhere. It's becoming a, 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 like almost like an epidemic, if you want to put it that way. I think presence is more of understanding your essence and um, being present with what you're doing during the day. So say if you're a doctor, being present in terms of when you're treating a patient, if you're a whatever consultant, being fully present with the person that you're speaking to. I think it's more of an essence of going about who you are, but eliminating all the trash in the mind that people experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah. it doesn't mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, the problem is, as it is with so many things in life, where do you draw the line? What is a burden? Not every negative um, memory and not every negative fear, not every anxiety is a burden. Maybe some of that actually helps you. So where do you draw the line? How much being in the past is okay? How much being in the future is okay? Because if you're not in the future, honestly, there is no reason to go to school, to plan, to do to do anything. So how much is the fear of being poor um, in the future a good thing? And where does it become detrimental? So that's why I'm saying it's a nice thought and concept to make people stop and say, how much are you being burdened by it? But you are human. You have to be burdened and also elevated by thoughts of the future and by thoughts about your history. You have to have a certain concept of who am I and what have I been, what have I experienced, what have I done, which, which of these things were beautiful, which of these things were shameful, 
all of that mm. makes you. And the goal is not to be completely in the present, but the goal is to know where you've come from and to know where you're going or to at least plan where you're going and have something in front of you. Uh, who told me that about Arnold Schwarzenegger? I think it was my brother today on the phone, how Arnold Schwarzenegger said he always had a goal. And with that goal in mind, everything came easier. The motivation was there. But a goal in mind, you know what that is? That's living and anticipating the future. Mm, also manifesting it as well. The manifestation exactly. happens in the present by working out in his case and becoming Mr. Universe eventually. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we have to find a good ratio and just making people aware of the fact that there is a benefit of living a bit in the past, there is a benefit of living a bit in the future, but the majority of their time should be in the here and now. Mm. So, so I guess it's finding a balance as well. Yeah, it's always about balance. And I don't like this, oh yeah, meditation. Think about nothing. No, dude, no. Meditation is focus on yourself. You may think about something else. Come back to what you were thinking about. Yeah, so um, yeah I've, I've always taken meditation as sitting and being present of present of your thoughts and kind of seeing what's in your own mind or diving deep into your own insanity if you will because yeah. most of the time like uh, I think meditation is, is, is a vital element of our, of our health it must obviously not to take it to the extreme because of where we live and how we live we live in a fast-paced uh, society that is constant information constant need to I guess live, pay rent, pay this, pay that. You know what I mean? You have to talk to this guy, talk to this person. It's constantly fast paced. But I feel like uh, meditation is almost self reflection. It's taking time out of the day to be conscious of what's going behind your subconscious mind. And I feel like when you're when you're conscious of the subconscious or like what's what's running behind the mind, maybe you can understand certain problems that you have, and people don't know obviously what's wrong with them. Yeah, You know, when people experience anger, people experience irritation, pathological lying, these are all, I guess, uh, symptoms of an underlying issue. And I feel like meditation, obviously, if practiced correctly, could bring light to potential solutions to your being or centeredness. Even, even the aspect of being centered, being in touch with, okay, this is who I am. This is what I need to do to improve. This is my current situation. What do I do to improve? How do I move forward from this? Rather than constantly feeling, I feel like I'm judged big by this person. I feel like I need to fit in. I don't have this car, so I feel a certain way. Um, the past, maybe an event happened. My, my, I don't know, like a, a death or uh, an embarrassment and constantly that lingering in your mind. And then uh, it starts accumulating to the point where you, you, you become insane, essentially. I like your approach. Because that's what that's almost the same idea that uh, stands behind or yeah is the basis for a dream diary. You just want to know what is there in my brain when I think it's turned off, and what comes out are subconscious thoughts. Not that I'm thinking, "Ooh, the dream has power to predict my life and destiny and all that," but just the fact that you've been dreaming about a certain person or about a certain event means that it seems to be important enough to yeah, to busy your brain at night. Mm. Can I monologue a bit? Yeah, of course. Okay, so sometimes you once uh, told me the only real thing is breathing, focus on what is real, focus on what is. And mm. yes, it is somehow right, but the cool thing about life is not only what is, and the human thing about life is what is not. So going into a bit of philosophy, brain functions. So the most important word in any language I once read is the word no. Because mm. but no opens a world, the world of what is not. 
Because as long as you're just counting the things you see, as long as you're only talking about things that are there, you are basically not really creating a world. The word no, the word, yeah, the word no just allows you to say what is not. We don't have five. We could have five apples. Let's make a story about five apples. I, I'm, I'm being silly right now, but uh, the world that is not much uh, the big world already. Mm. The I guess everything stems from the because the, the willing or the, the wanting to know leads to every possible discovery. You know, I mean, even, even, even when you break it down to the simple point of the opposite sex, you want to know the, the opposite sex. You want to know what they like. You want to know, you want to know them. There's a sense of knowing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like, I guess without knowing nothing can exist. You, you would just be isolated. I don't, I, I don't know if I'm following you on this thought. Because things exist. Even but if, if you I don't know. Yeah, but even if you... If I, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines, say, that you... Uh, uh, like an ant, for example, right? Yes. Things do exist, right? But yeah. say an ant's per perception of reality is only within a limited space. It does not know that you are there unless you physically bring your presence there, right? So it's yeah. almost forced knowing. But like it, it comes again to the, to the concept of uh, if you obviously don't know anything, things do still exist, but it, the willing to know is what actually strives to get information. For example, science, isn't it? It's the willing to know how the body works, what is causing an issue. Um, how can I improve myself? It's the willing to know that could lead to information. Yeah, it's what is not there that is drawing you. It's the, yeah. the gap that needs to be filled. Uh, uh, there is a cool word in Latin, horror vacui, the fear of the emptiness. So you, you fill the emptiness. I have a few more interesting thoughts that came up when you said, um, living in the here and now. So yeah. I read an article in GQ magazine and it was brought to my attention because it was the most read article on GQ.com. It's called The Last True Hermit. And it is about this man called Tr Christopher Thomas Knight. And he was an, a hermit in the northeast of the US, I think I remember. It is not important, but when they eventually um, arrested him, it was for burglary because in the wintertime, he left the woods and not he didn't leave the woods, but he broke into um, vacation homes of more wealthy people to look for food. Mm. They interviewed this guy who had no <coughs> time anymore. So they asked him how long ha had he been a hermit and living in the woods. He said, no idea, like, when did Chernobyl happen? Because that is one of the last things that I remember while I was in society. Uh, and I think this was uh, 2014, the article came out. I don't remember how, how long he, he stayed, but a considerable amount of time, more than half of his life. And he could describe how he felt which I find very interesting because he says that he didn't think or feel too much. He didn't talk with anybody. He would just live in the moment, looking for food, looking for shelter, looking for just security from uh, predators. It's just his life was focused on the most basic needs. Mm -hmm. So he lived like an animal. He lived in the here and now. And that's why I'm saying it if you really take it to an extreme, you become that. Yeah. And even the people who don't take it to that kind of extreme, the monks, yeah, very nice that monks maybe find enlightenment or they're happy or they're calm or whatever. But then again, how human is a monk when the most human thing there is is society and mingling and doing. It's not spending 
five hours sleeping and 17 hours meditating or being alone or I, I don't know whatever they do, but it always seems to me like they do nothing but take care of their inner selves when the human neglecting the outside. Yeah, it's, it's connecting with other people, connecting to the outside world, changing. As much as we are destroying the world, we we have to do something. We are creators. We are changers. We are we cut, we seed, we do, we make. We, now we're more breaking, but I think that eventually we'll come around and we'll improve again. So I think that we need the focus on future and past. It shouldn't overtake everything, but as was with everything in line in life, there is a line, there is a dosage that is healthy, and there is a dosage that is an overdosage or an underdosage. And to be honest, the monks don't impress me too much. Because mm. if someone goes hard in something and becomes the best violinist in the world, at least he's giving something to the society. He's building, he's he's putting one more stone into culture, into history, into something. They, they're, they're doing everything inside themselves, which is nice for them, but what about me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the beauty of human diversity. If you want to go and meditate in a mountain for your life, then you're free to do so. If you want to work and if you want to contribute to society, you can uh, do that. I guess there's multi levels of how we can live our life but then again there's it also feeds into the alpha and the mega um the light the dark like how could you know you're a hard worker if there's not an extreme of a lazy person mm -hmm. you know what i mean like there's there's extremes and there's elements of all aspects of ourselves and i guess it's finding where you fit in or what what you want to fit in or what you want to do yes but the concept of thought in itself I was thinking about this the other day. We think thoughts are our own, right? Yes. But how much is it that it's not really our own thought? Because when you think about it, like we're constantly influenced by external sources. So what, how do we know what original thought is? And even these thoughts that you were saying constantly want to strive to do, to create, there is an element that pushes external thoughts that push you to be that person. If you were to take a person and completely neglect them from society or neglect them from, like, say, say how the monks are isolated, what thoughts come into mind when, they're, when, when obviously the collective isn't thinking a certain, certain way? Do you I get think, what I mean? Or? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. W which thought is innate? Which would just spring? What is original thought? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think original thought would not be very useful because the thoughts that we're having are based on thoughts of many people. The, the original thought may be something pure, but not something very refined at the same... Or would it? Maybe that purity would be very refined. Hmm. Either way, I guess it's a, it's a, it's a hard topic to... to... I think it's a topic that's been around for, for thousands of years. But like Alan Watts said, he said the nature of the human being is like the nature of a sword, right? The sword can never understand that it's a sword. It can only cut. Um, so, it, yeah. But I don't know. Then why were we blessed with this concept of, of, of questioning our, ourselves, our purpose? Even yeah. just the fabric of everything. Like, how the fuck does this, this all pop up? Like, we're just here, we exist, and when we die and we move on. You know what I mean? Like, we go to bed every, every day, we sleep, we transcend somewhere else in another dimension, because we're certainly not operating on this plane. Our bodies are physically still on this plane, but our minds are elsewhere. You know what I mean? Our, our, we're, we're in completely la-la land. We're in a different dimension. That's mm -hmm. the best way to put it. And then it's such an interesting thing that happens day in day out and we never really question it we just take it for granted we take it as another part of us we go mm. to sleep we come back the sense of purpose happens again you know what i mean like where does this sense of purpose and the sense of being even exist what are your thoughts on that Larry? 
It's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. I think we lost the connection to that one. We are only in, the, we are too much in this world to know what else there is because we're too occupied, too, too stimulated. My, my art teacher used to say, these paintings of which we now have seen thousands and thousands of, like mm. Rio with Jesus, um, whatever, depictions of God. Why were they so important? And he, he said, just picture yourself being in 1200, in the year 1200, your whole life is gray and dark and green maybe from the nature, but everything is mud. Your, your clothes don't have color. Your house doesn't have color. Everything is brown. And, uh, and then you go to a small town and you enter the church and it may have stained glass windows or it doesn't, but there may be a painting somewhere. And it's mm. just the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen. You know, and that could stimulate you. And now we're stimulated all the time. So we never, we never go back into a state where our mind stimulates itself and maybe comes up with its own purpose or comes up with anything by itself because everything comes from outside. The, the excitement, there is so much noise and static that comes from the outside that we don't mm. use our own thoughts. That's why it becomes unconscious or how you say it's subconscious. Maybe people didn't have too much unconscious thought back in the day because they had the capacity to even listen to that. It was just there. There was not too much in a society, too much. Uh, someone with a harp could come through town and could entertain people for days because there was not much else. Mm. Sorry, in, in, like if we were to get anything from this conversation, I guess it's the balance of both, right? The meditation in order to reconnect and then obviously the stimulation that we experience day to day to play the game as well. But I think we get caught, we've got caught up so much in the game, we forgot to reconnect. Maybe we've forgotten how to reconnect. And that's what enlightenment really is, is people that remember how to connect again. Yeah, maybe. Because even, yeah, even when you look at ancient Egypt, they, they're all about uh, astral projection, meditation, connecting with the spirit world. And the whole concept of spirit world exists among all cultures everywhere, even though they, they never had contact with each other. So there is an element or there is an aspect of existence that we've in the modern world neglected or have forgotten how to connect with that aspect of life. Even in, in tribes like Amazon, like you, like we've watched together, like videos that I've sent you, like they're completely ne ne neglected from, from modern society and the, the same concept, nature, spirit, God, you know what I mean? It's like they, 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 they know something we don't, but because of our technological advances, we, we feel like, like we're right. I think it comes from the from the arrogance of thinking we know everything like we're right because yeah, yeah. We have, you know what i mean like we know the, things, they, they, yeah we know yeah. we know about things that we have made or that society has made but yeah. we know less about what is there and what is real and what is natural like we may know about nonsense uh, who wrote this song what can you do with a computer who landed on the moon all very nice but we wouldn't be even be, we, I wouldn't even know which plant I can eat in the Amazon. I, you know how sad it is that they say you have to reconnect with nature. You have to go out in nature. Number one, there is no real nature nature anymore. But even if you go into the woods here in Luxembourg, just walking around, I, have, I don't know when's the last time that I've touched ground, like real soil with my own feet. Yeah, with your feet. That is almost sad like we've become they call so it earthing. They call it earthing. or even worse i don't even know whether the food that i've eaten although it's vegetables and fruit like how removed that is from a real apple how removed that is from maybe even soil like i don't know where my paprika came from so 
everything is disconnected and disconnect is a huge problem because humans are all about connection mm. um i like to quote the following we don't have big brains to solve math problems we have big brains to live in society because society is a complex thing because we have to connect with people we have to organize with people and that is complex it's not complicated it's complex because you cannot really foresee all the movements all the thoughts all the everything that goes on behind um behind someone's eyes mm. and not only connection between humans but also connections of human and nature like we are there to be connected and when yeah, we're, most definitely. we're happier when you are when you don't have people you're unhappy but also yeah. when you spend all day in a cubicle and everything around you is gray and unnatural and has pointed like it's, it's has sharp edges and pointed ends you are not where you're supposed to be you are in your suit you are in looking at a screen that emanates light which is also very unnatural the only light source the real light source is fire and sun and everything mm. else is not natural and don't come with don't give me the bioluminescence stuff like uh, we're talking in general or i'm talking yeah of course no, i agree with you yeah so the more connected we are the better we are off mm. Mm. so i guess it's just the process of reconnecting yeah we we'll have at least an aspect of your life devoted to connecting I think it's just as important as as having an aspect of your life devoted to physical exercise to keep the body in 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 prime condition. A yeah. little bit of meditation, a little bit of exercise, reading to improve the mind, the brain. Yeah. I guess we are three part being and we've neglected the spiritual aspect of our being. Most people have neglected their physical act as well or physical part with their bodies with the food that they eat that they consume the mind as well not learning not studying it's almost like everyone or most people in modern society have just pursued pleasure sex uh drugs uh pursue i guess wealth like with with neg neglecting these three aspects of our of our being i think that's when problems start occurring down the line. Mm -hmm. But we have to go back to the living in the now as a goal. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have any major thoughts now, I would try to wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so my thing I guess living in the now comes into play. Living in the now is the aspect is the spiritual aspect of the three part being that we have as 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 human beings. doesn't have to mean again if you like you said the whole uh, monk thing how they just do that for what 17 hours a day meditate and just sleep meditate again i, I guess like they they they're neglecting the other two parts so i guess it's an overall balance of of uh, of everything and to be fair like we're almost like uh, caged animals at this point like if you let a caged animal go in the wild they're fucked same thing with us because like you said you don't know what what tree is what tree or what plant you can eat or how to survive like yeah. if we were just let in the woods right now we'd probably die eventually yeah because we're not connected anymore exactly exactly and woods will not take care of us because <laughs> we're uh, connected <laughs> yeah so um to wrap it up i would just say you need your past and you need your future because your identity is made up of the experience you have made the feelings you've had made you have made the the skills and the knowledge you have acquired over the course of your life and mm. your your identity is made up of what you see coming for you where you are going and now your goal is to balance all that mm. take take what you know take the good things focus on the good things no don't forget the bad things because if you forget that someone has stolen from you 10 times 
uh, maybe he'll steal an 11th time. So I'm being a bit stupid again, but this is it. Oh, most definitely. Learn, I guess, from the mistake. Yeah, and when someone tells you to live in the present, I only hear someone, for example, in yoga, they say, and now touch your knee with your nose. Okay, I, I don't think that I will be able to do that, but just trying to do that will get me in a better shape and more flexible. So when someone says, try to be more in the now or just in the now, I go for, let's be more in the now. Hmm. Great way to end it, Deary. I guess that's the first session. You got it, my friend. Um, yeah, and um, obviously, as we progress, we'll just have different thoughts and different ideas, and we'll just talk about it. For now, I guess this this is uh, session one, uh, here and now, thoughts on it. Okay, my friend. Have a good night. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Lou.